welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice let us begin the lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana <coughs> vishvesham sachidanandam वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया in this course we we concentrate on the three types of samasas in sanskrit namely avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva after having studied the theoretical background of compound formation in sanskrit as stated by panini and the paninian grammatical tradition we then started studying in detail the avyayi bhava samasa which is an extremely important type of samasas in sanskrit the structure of the avyayi bhava samasa can be represented in this particular small equation where we have x and y as two different independent entities in terms of form word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent this x and y they are semantically related the speaker of sanskrit wants to merge them together and generate an output which is one unit out of these two input units so the output unit is generated xy and this is one unit now in this xy x is stated in the bold character because we want to highlight the fact that in the avyayi bhava samasa x assumes the position of the head as far as the meaning is concerned and also the word form is concerned the meaning of x is the head of xy which means that any other word out of this samasa if that word is to be related to this samasa then it has to be through the meaning of the x and x also acts as the head as far as the word form is concerned primarily because x is an avyaya or indeclinable in the avyayi bhava samasa and the output xy also is termed as avyaya so the term avyayi bhava which is significant and self explanatory which says that anavyayam avyayam bhavati so x is an avyaya but y is not an avyaya but the output xy 
becomes an avyaya and therefore this samasa is called avyayi bhava this is how this expression this equation represents the avyayi bhava samasa and its structure formally as well as semantically we say that in the ashtadhyayi avyayi bhava samasa is treated at different places in general in the ashtadhyayi 2.1 and 2.2 we find the sutras prescribing the compound in specifics the sutras prescribing the avyayi bhava compound avyayi bhava samasa vidhayaka sutras they are found in 21 from from 215 up to 2121 215 is avyayi bhava and 2121 is anya padarthe cha saudnyayam incidentally 2122 is tatpurushaha which cancels the word avyayi bhava which continues in 2121 from 215 then the samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutras namely the sutras which prescribe the suffix that appears at the end of the samasa as far as avyayi bhava compound is concerned are stated in a small section which begins with 5.4.107 up to 5.4.112 there aren't many swara vidhayaka sutras related to avyayi bhava the sutras prescribing the accent however we find a few for example 62121 etc amongst the samasa vidhayaka sutras which we have been studying so far we have already seen a number of sutras and we are carrying forward our study of these sutras we first of all study 216 which is a very big sutra however if we look at this sutra carefully we come to know that there are only two padas in the sutra the first pada is avyayam and the second pada is vibhakti samipa samruddhi vriddhi artha bhava atyaya asamprati shabda pradurbhav paschat yatha anupurvya yoga padya sadrshya sampatti sakalya ant vachaneshu avyayam is in prathama 11 and therefore it becomes upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and the second pad which is in the seventh case lays down various semantic conditions these are the meanings of the avyayas and in these meanings avyayas get compounded with the related subanta amongst these we have already studied the four semantic conditions and we have already studied how the avyayi bhava samasa takes place namely vibhakti samipa samruddhi and vriddhi the overall meaning of this sutra 216 is the following vibhaktyadishu artheshu vidyamanam avyayam subantam समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह समस्यते अव्ययी भावश्च समासो भवति रिपीट विभक्त्यादिषु अर्थेषु विद्यमानम अव्ययम सुबंतम समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह समस्यते अव्ययी भावश्च 
समासो भवती वॉट दिस मीन्स इज दैट एनी इन डिक्लाइनेबल सुबंध डिनोटिंग द सेंस ऑफ विभक्ति एक्सेट्रा इज कंपाउंडेड विथ एनी अदर इंटर रिलेटेड सेमेंटिकली इंटर रिलेटेड सुबंध एंड द रिजल्टेंट कंपाउंड इज कॉल्ड अव्ययी भाव आई रिपीट एनी इन डिक्लाइनेबल सुबंध अव्यय डिनोटिंग द सेंस ऑफ विभक्ति एक्सेट्रा विभक्तियादेश अर्थेश विद्यम इज कंपाउंडेड समस्ते विथ एनी अदर सेमेंटिकली रिलेटेड सुबंत समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह एंड द रिजल्टेंट कंपाउंड सामस इज कॉल्ड अव्ययी भाव अव्ययी भाव बहुत एज वी सेड दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डेल्ट विथ द फर्स्ट फोर सेमेंटिक कंडीशंस नेमली विभक्ति समीप समृद्धि एंड वृद्धि नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर वी शैल फोकस ऑन द नेक्स्ट फोर सेमेंटिक कंडीशंस एंड स्टडी हाउ द अव्यय भाव समास टेक्स प्लेस वेन द अव्यय डिनोट्स दीज मीनिंग्स दीज मीनिंग्स आर अर्था भाव नेमली द एबसेंस ऑफ एन एलिमेंट अर्थ अत्यय विच इज पासिंग और ओवरकमिंग असंप्रति विच मीन्स नॉट नाउ एंड शब्द प्रादुर्भाव स्प्रेडिंग द वर्ड दीज आर द फोर सेमेंटिक कंडीशंस लेट अस स्टडी देम इन डिटेल एंड स्टडी हाउ द अव्यय भाव समास इज जनरेटेड फर्स्ट लेट अस फोकस ऑन अर्थाभाव अर्थाभाव इज अर्थस्य अभाव द एबसेंस ऑफ एन एलिमेंट और एन एंटिटी एज द ट्रेडिशनल कॉमेंटेटर्स पुट इट वस्तुन अभाव अर्थाभाव इज वस्तुन अभाव इन अ मोर सोफिस्टिकेटेड टर्मिनोलॉजी द ट्रेडिशनल कॉमेंटेटर्स से धर्मी स्वरूप से अभाव द एबसेंस ऑफ दैट फॉर्म विच पॉजिसेस अ धर्म विच पॉजिसेस अ प्रॉपर्टी दैट काइंड ऑफ वस्तु दैट काइंड ऑफ एंटिटी इज एबसेंट एंड दिस इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज अर्थाभाव to use the terminology used by the nayikas or the logicians some commentators say that this artha bhava refers to atyanta bhava atyanta bhava is absence absolute so according to the commentators a vyayi bhava samas is not possible in the sense of घटा पटो न अ पॉट इज नॉट अ क्लॉथ वेर म्यूचुअल एबसेंस और अन्योन्या भाव इज इंटेंडेड सो इन द सेंटेंस घटा पटो न वी नो दैट घट इज नॉट पट एंड पट इज नॉट घट सो देर इज म्यूचुअल एबसेंस इन दिस केस द अर्था भाव कंडीशन डज एंट अप्लाय and the avyayi bhava samas between ghataha and pataha does not take place we have only atyanta bhava the absence absolute which is what is referred to here as artha bhava now let us look at the example to illustrate these semantic conditions as well as the formation of the avyayi bhava samas if the meaning is absence of flies this is the absence of flies absolutely and so we have makshikanam abhavah makshikanam abhavah now this abhav this artha bhav is expressed or represented by an avyaya nir 
since in this sutra 216 avyayam is stated in prathama vibhakti so it becomes upasarjana and then it becomes the first member of the samas or purva pad therefore nir expressing the meaning abhava occupies the initial position of the samas so we have nir plus su plus makshika plus am in this step we apply 2471 sopo dhatu pratipadika yoho and both the sups are deleted so we have nir plus 0 plus makshika plus 0 when we join these together we get nirmakshika now this is an avyayi bhav samas and then immediately the sutra avyayi bhavascha applies which states that an avyayi bhav samas has the neuter gender and then 1243 namely rasvo napumsake pratipadikasya applies and this this nirmakshika is an avyayi bhava samasa so it is in neuter and it is a pratipadika and it is therefore the final long vowel is shortened and we get the finally derived compound output as nirmakshika makshikanam abhavah is the laukika vigraha nir plus su plus makshika plus am is the alaukika vigraha and the finally derived compound output is nir makshika now when this pratipadika is used in the sentence we add su pratyaya after nir makshika so we have nir makshika plus su now because nir makshika is an avyayi bhava samasa which ends in short a we apply the sutra na vyayi bhava datom tva panchamya 2482 and substitute this su by am so we have nirmakshika plus am then we apply the sandhi rules and we get the form nirmakshikam this is the subanta form of this avyayi bhava samasa when we use this samasa in the sentence we can have the sentence like nirmakshikam vartate there is absence of flies here similarly nirmashakam vartate there is absence of mosquitoes over here so this samasa indicates that in this place there are no mosquitoes nirmashakam and there are no flies nirmakshikam note that in this particular sentence the avyayi bhava samasa is acting as the kartrupad of the verbal root vrut <coughs> now let us proceed to the next semantic condition which is atyaya and atyaya means passing or overcoming atyaya is interpreted by the traditional commentators as abhutatvam or atikramaha which means the passing as well as overcoming and also dhamsaha dhamsa means absence generated after the destruction an element exists and then it gets destroyed therefore the absence is generated after the destruction that is what atyaya stands for and so using the nyaya 
terminology, we can say that a Vyayabhava Samasa is not possible in the sense of Ghatasya Pragabhava, the absence of the pot before it comes into being. Pragabhava is the absence which exists before something comes into being. In that sense, we cannot have the Avyayabhava Samasa because Atyaya means only Dhamsa, the absence generated after the destruction. Let us look at the example. So, the semantic condition is or the meaning is passing of snow Atitani Himani. So, Hima is destroyed and the season has moved on. In order to express this, we have the following Alaukika Vigraha. So, the meaning Atita is represented by the Avyaya Ati. So we have Ati plus Jas plus Hima plus Jas. Now this is the Alaukika Vigraha and then there is Samasa Saudhnya applying. Therefore we apply the Sutra Supodhatuk Pratipadika Yoho and we delete the Supratyayas. So we have Ati plus zero plus Hima plus zero. When we join these together, we get the finally derived compound output in the form of Ati Hima. Ati Tani Himani is the Laukika Vigraha. Ati Hima is the finally derived compound output. When we want to use Ati Hima in the sentence, we will add supratyaya after atihima and then because atihima ends in a the supratyaya which is generally otherwise deleted because of avyayada apsupaha is not deleted on account of the sutra na avyayi bhavad atom tva panchamyaha where this sutra prescribes a substitution in place of su and this substitution is am. So we have atihima plus am. When we do the sandhi rule, we get the final output as atihimam. When we use this in the sentence, we can say atihimam vartate. There is passing of snow. The season has changed and so the hima, the snow, is destroyed. So, atihimam vartate. Similarly, we can also say atishitam vartate. The winter has passed. There is passing of cold or winter. That means the warmth has started growing. So, shita or winter has ceased to exist. So, this is dhvamsa of shita as well as dhvamsa of hima and therefore the condition Atyaya applies and so we get the Avyayi Bhava Samasa in the form of Atihima as well as Atishita. Let us now look at the third semantic condition today in this lecture which is Asamprati which means not now. Na samprati, asamprati. What it means is that samprati na yujjate. Samprati is now, na yujjate is not befitting. Not befitting what? Not befitting the present time. So, samprati is the present time and na yujyate is not befitting. 
the traditional commentators explain this meaning by saying upabhogasya vartamana kala pratishedhah upabhogasya vartamana kala pratishedhah negation of the present time experience where arthabhav refers to the absence in all times asamprati refers to the negation of the present time experience therefore asamprati is different than arthabhav so arthabhav refers to the absence in all times in some place etc that is not what asamprati denotes let us look at the example the meaning to be conveyed is sleep is not befitting the present time what it actually means is that this is not the right time for sleep so we have nidra samprati najujyate as the laukik vigraha and then we have the alaukik vigraha namely ati plus su plus nidra plus su so asamprati is expressed by the avyaya ati so we have ati plus su plus nidra plus su now the samasa saudnya takes place and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho is applied so we delete both the sus and so we have ati plus 0 plus nidra plus 0 then we join them together and we get ati nidra now this is an avyayi bhava samasa so the sutra avyayi bhavas ch states that this samasa has neuter gender and then rasvo napumsake pratipadikasya is another sutra that applies which substitutes the long vowel at the end of the samasa into a short vowel so we have ati nidra as the finally derived compound output nidra samprati nayujyate is the input semantic condition and ati nidra as a samasa is the output when we use ati nidra in the sentence we have ati nidra plus su and because ati nidra is an avyayi bhav samasa which ends in short a na avyayi bhavad atomto panchamya applies and substitutes the pratyaya su by the pratyaya am so we have ati nidra plus am and then we apply the sandhi rule and we get the form ati nidram ati nidram vartate this is how we shall use it what it means is this is not the right time to experience sleep ati nidram vartate nidraya ayam upabhoga kalo nasti ityartha ati nidraya ayam upabhoga kalo nasti ityartha similarly the other example given by the commentators is ati taisrukam vartate now taisruk is a word derived from the word tisruka which is the name of a village something that is made in tisruka is called taisruka so this particular samasa says that this is not the right time for the covering sheet made in the village named tisruka ati taisrukam vartate now let us look at the next semantic condition which is shabda pradurbhav spread of the word prakashata shabdasya now the word iti which is an avyaya denotes this shabda prakash or shabda pradurbhav the word iti makes the associate word stands for its own form and then denotes 
the spread of that own form that is that word iti shabdasya swarupa parena svasambaddha shabdena samasah the word iti is compounded with the related word which denotes its its own form let us now look at the example when the meaning to be conveyed is spread of the word panini panini shabdo loke prakashate this is the laukika vigraha and the alaukika vigraha is iti plus su plus panini plus su iti is an avyaya and it occupies the initial position of the samasa because this is a samasa the sutra supodhatuk pratipadika yo applies and deletes both the sus so we have iti plus 0 plus panini plus 0 and then we join them together and we get the samasa iti panini so panini shabdo loke prakashate is the input and iti panini as a samasa avyayi bhava samasa is the output when we use this in the sentence we add the pratyaya su to it iti panini plus su now here we drop su by the sutra avyayadap supaha so we have iti panini plus 0 so the finally derived subanta form is iti panini similarly we can also generate the forms like iti hari what it means is the word hari has spread in the world so panini shabdo loke prakashate so iti panini is the meaning it iti panini is the samasa and also the subanta which conveys this particular meaning similarly if the meaning to be conveyed is the word shiva is spread in the world shiva shabdo loke prakashate we have the alaukika vigraha iti plus su plus shiva plus su then both the sus are deleted so we have iti plus 0 plus shiva plus 0 and so the compound output would be iti shiva now since this ends in a short a so iti shiva plus su and su is substituted by am by the sutra navyai bhava da tom pavanchamyaha and then we apply the sandhi rule so we get iti shivam when we use it in the sentence we say ati shivam vartate there is spread of the word shiva in the world similarly iti panini vartate abalam iti panini vartate this is how the commentators explain that panini's panini word is spread up to the small children even they know what panini is who panini is this is how in these semantic conditions the avyayi bhava samasa takes place and is generated and is used in the sentence next we study how the processing of the avyayi bhava samasa happens with remaining conditions how it progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how the output behaves in the sentence these are the texts referred to thank you